welcome to lecture on flow of water through soils part 1. After having covered the concept of effective stress in saturated soils and partially saturated soils and effect of fluctuations of water table on effect on effective stress and capillarity phenomena, we will be now discussing what will happen when water flows through soils, how water can flow through soil and how important it is in the consideration of soil mechanics engineering. So, in the previous uh, lecture, we have understood about this effective stress concept and we have uh, discussed in length about total stress is equal to effective stress plus pore water pressure. Then we also discussed about the condition for partially saturated soils. Then in case of fluctuations of water table under no flow conditions, under no flow condition, uh, we have discussed that what are the consequence of fluctuations of water table on the effective stress and finally, uh, we discussed about the capillarity phenomenon. So, in this uh, lecture in the beginning of this uh, lecture, let us again look into the concept particularly the practical examples pertaining to capillarity phenomenon. So, as we discussed in, in the previous lecture, uh, we said that there will be different types of waters in soil. The water table which is uh, that is called the ground water table which is uh, this particular region and which represents the ground water regime and here the capillarity uh, zone or a capillarity water which can occur and which can keep the soil uh, under saturated conditions. This depends upon the, the type of the soil. And another one is the gravitational water, this is basically an intermediate zone which comes under the Wado's zone and then soil water. So, what we have seen is that there is a zone of aeration. So, that means that there exists a partially saturated soil and there exists a, a zone of saturation that can occur below the groundwater table. So, while looking into the physical examples of capillarity phenomenon, uh, we have introduced uh, two examples in the previous lecture. Now, we are just looking into them once again. So, here consider in this slide uh, the along the beach, we always come across the soil uh, which is in certain region has got certain good strength or carrying capacity which can encourage movement of the vehicles or which can also have uh, one can walk easily uh, on that particular type of soil. When you go away from that certain zone, you will find again the soil of poor strength and towards the zone where water breaks, you will find again the soil of poor strength. The reasons could be the entirely due to this capillarity phenomenon. So, here in this zone where soil exhibits good strength that is exhibiting because of the confining pressure results from the column of water hanging on the different minuski at the surface of the beach. So, uh, when this is uh, uh, remained in this condition, the hanging water columns which are there in this uh, pore spaces will try to have something called a negative pore water pressure which influences something called an, an increase, increase in the effective stress that results in the uh, soil of good strength. Where if you consider the relative density is more or less same in the entire location. So, though the relative density is more or less same only change in the presence of the capillary moisture and its absence because of this it exhibits this particular phenomenon. Particularly in this zone when the sea water breaks capillary minuski gets washed off and temporarily uh, induced shear strength is lost. So, because of this negative pore water pressure this can overcome once this wave on the wave, wave breaks then what will happen is that these minuski which are these hanging water columns which are there in the pore spaces of the soil can get washed off in the process when the soil becomes again saturated then it loses all the strength. So, this is one certain example where uh, a capillarity phenomenon uh, uh, exists. The another example is we discuss uh, particularly in case of uh, moist sand under partially moist condition sand under the moist conditions that is a partially saturated sands. 
For example, when you have got a sand with uh, partially saturated conditions, you will see that there is a capillary water formed by the soil particles. That means that there will be a thin film of water which is surrounding this uh, grain particles and which in turn because of the surface tension force what will happen is that this um, the force in the minisci that is the surface tension uh, because of the surface tension which actually exerts a compressive force uh, at grain to grain contacts. In the forces it, it actually uh, resembles something like an enhancement and in increase in the uh, shear strength because of the more friction. So, this results something called a bulking structure in sand due to capillary action. So, partially what is happening here is that the strength gain in granular soil due to partial saturation and surface tension is termed as capillary, uh, it is termed as an apparent cohesion. Surface uh, strength gain in granular soil, uh, strength gain in granular soil due to partial saturation and surface tension is termed as apparent cohesion. This apparent cohesion is very significant under partially saturated conditions, but once this uh, when it is subjected to saturation what will happen is that uh, this and uh, particularly this strength gain whatever we have got during the partial saturation can we can get rid of that then there will be this apparent cohesion disappears. So, that is why this particular name which is appeared uh, which is given for this cohesion is called apparent cohesion. So, let us define once again the strength gain in granular soil due to partial saturation and surface tension is termed as an apparent cohesion. So, why we are required to uh, study flow of water through soil? The motivation let us try to look into this slide. The ability of engineers to understand and predict the flow of fluids usually water in soils is essential for many applications in engineering. So, having seen the application particularly practical examples relevant to capillarity phenomenon and effective stress conditions under no flow conditions. Now, we will be trying to understand what will happen when the water fly water flows through the soil. What is the motivation behind this study? Let us look into it. So, consider it has got uh, importance uh, from environmental engineering or construction engineering point of view or dealing with certain uh, construction activities in soil. So, definitely this particularly the flow of water through soil or a fluid flow through soil is very important and very significant. So, consider here in this slide holding log, uh, uh, lagoon where a toxic liquid is uh, stored. So, the questions always will come is that uh, whether we can retain this uh, particularly this toxic liquid in place or not or at what rate is toxic liquid escaping the holding lagoon. So, in case if you are not able to retain uh, with the proper method at what rate it disappears it uh, starts escaping uh, the holding lagoon and how long might it take the liquid to reach the groundwater table. So, the rate at which it can flow through the liquid that is again uh, needs an understanding about flow of water through soils and what can be done to slow down the rate of the escape from the pollutants. Is there any possibility of constructing barriers that is the question which is required to be answered. This can be done once we understand uh, this particular uh, study uh, or a chapter on flow of water through soils. In terms of the construction engineering generally for uh, bridge pier construction uh, in rivers or so a coffer dams which are constructed and for that a sheet pile walls basically this type of structures are driven into the ground and uh, water was retained on the upstream side and the construction activity is carried out temporarily. So, here the safety particularly what will happen is that when there is water is retained the water tends to move or flow in this direction. So, in the possibility whether is there any instability due to flow of water in this particular location or not. So, this is required to be understood from the construction engineering point of view. So, the questions which are required to be answered in the previous slide uh, for the construction engineering point of view they are what will be the rate of water flow water inflow into the site. That means that the site is referred here is the one which is in between the space which is formed within the coffer dam structure. Is it possible that soil will liquefy 
and endanger construction workers. That means that liquefaction is nothing but a momentary loss of shear strength because of the upward flow of water. So, is it possible that the soil will liquefy and endanger construction workers? So, our objective here is to gain an understanding of the mechanics of fluid flow in soils so that engineering problems of this type can be eventually addressed. So, this type of engineering problems like what we have seen for example, holding lagoon or a construction of a coffer dam uh, structure this can be answered once we understood the mechanics of fluid flow in soil so that engineering problems of this type can be eventually be addressed. So, now having introduced now let us look into uh, again soil which is nothing but assemblies of particles. So, when water flow can flow in any direction it can take any path. So, the path taken by the water uh, is along the pore spaces along the pore spaces within the soil mass. That means that if you treat the soils or assemble assemblies of solid particles. So, this is a solid particle and this is a solid particle and what this is a particular flow path water can take a flow uh, flow direction like this. So, this can flow once it is subjected to uh, uh, some higher energy here and lower energy here like current it flows from it flows from high potential to low potential. Similarly, here the water tries to flow from higher uh, energy to lower energy. So, it can have innumerable number of flow directions or flow paths can be established. The flow of water path particularly water path within the soil particles is called tortuous path. So, soils are assemblies of solid particles with interconnected voids through which water can flow from a point of high energy to a point of low energy. So, so this particularly uh, the in order for the flow to take place to the soil it should have something called a high energy at an upstream point to the low energy from the uh, at the downstream point. If that is exists then there is a flow which can take place. For example, if there is no difference in energy then what will happen is that uh, it indicates that the flow is not taking place. So, it represents when the flow under no flow conditions it is called something called uh, hydro hydrostatic condition that we are aware from the previous lectures. So, the basically the study of flow of water through porous soil media is important because uh, if you look into this particular this uh, number point 1 involving the rate at which water flows through soil. That means that determination of the rate of leakage through an earth dam. For example, if you have got an earth dam the interest is that the rate of leakage of an earth dam. So, that is very much uh, important to assess and uh, to know in the design of earth dams. So, involving the rate at which water flows through the soil. So, sometimes it dictates now for us to even select materials based on this particular criteria. Uh, when we wanted to have a rapid water flow then particularly for say parking lots where you wanted to provide a drainage medium then you need to have uh, particularly uh, a, a medium or a soil at which water can flow rapidly. Where you wanted to say uh, prevent migration of water then in that case you are required to have a material which can stop particularly this type of questions can be answered by varying the type of soil. And involving the rate of settlement of a foundation that means that if you are constructing and if the soil is undergoing consolidation at what settlement rates at what rate the settlements will occur and what rate the loads will transfer at what rate this effective stress transfer will occur in soils in that we wanted to understand means uh, the knowledge of fluid flow through soils is required. And involving the strength that is the evaluation of the factor of safety or of an embankment. So, whether it is a long term uh, long term uh, uh, parameters uh, something called long term strength or short term strength depending upon the type of the structure under consideration uh, in involving the strength of a soil um, that also depends upon the, uh, the amount of water which is flowing out of the soil. So, this uh, indicates that the study of the flow of water through porous uh, media is very important. Now, let us consider in this slide which is shown an assemblage of solid particles. So, the voids which are in between the blue ones what you are seeing assume that they are occupied by water. Now, A is a point and B is a point A let us assume that having a higher energy and B is a point we having low energy. 
So, the flow can take place from A to B and this is the direction of the flow. Now, if in reality the flow path of a uh, water which is which generally looks like this which is a winding path or which is defined as a tortuous path that is along the contact points or along the pore spaces of the soil medium. But like we did in effective stress what we do is that we look into macroscopic point of view and take uh, a line passing through solids as well as pore spaces and contact points. So, that is defined as a flow path under macroscopic scale. So, the water does not flow from point A to B in a straight line, but at constant uh, at constant velocity, but rather in a winding path from pore to pore. And depending upon the size of the pore, its velocity uh, within the uh, pore also changes. So, here at A it has got higher energy and B which has got a lower energy. So, water it enables water to flow from A to B. So, what we seen is that here in this case the water when it is flowing through the soil particles it will have is something called a winding path or which is defined as a tortuous path. But in reality if you consider that A to B it is not actually not flowing in a straight line from A to B, but it is taking a path which is called a winding path or a tortuous path. Now, let us look into the Bernoulli's uh, uh, theory of application of fluid mechanics here. According to Bernoulli's equation, uh, we knew that the total head is equal to pressure head plus velocity head plus elevation head. So, here uh, according to Bernoulli's equation, the total head at a point in water under motion can be given by the sum of the pressure, velocity and elevation heads. So, P w by gamma w represents the pressure head of the fluid and has the unit of length. So, H is equal to P w by gamma w, P is that pressure, gamma w is the unit weight of water, V is the velocity of flow uh, through the soil and uh, G is acceleration due to gravity, Z is the elevation in meters. So, if you look into this, the total head is a summation of P w uh, by gamma w that is pressure head plus velocity head which is nothing but v square by 2 z plus z, z is nothing but elevation head with reference to a particular or a selected arbitrary data. Now, what will happen is that in case of soils when the water is flowing through uh, soil the velocity is so small uh, the v square by 2 z term is very very small. So, what we generally consider in soil mechanics uh, which is different from fluid mechanics is that total head is equal to pressure head plus elevation head. So, V square by 2 z represents the kinetic or velocity head of the fluid and also has units of length. Since water flowing in typically has very small velocities, the velocity head is typically neg negligible compared to that of the pressure head and velocity uh, pressure head and elevation heads. So, for this reason velocity head is neglected in soil mechanics. So, this uh, total head in the sense what we do is that we write something like pressure head plus elevation head. Z is the elevation with reference to an arbitrary datum. So, the value is the distance of the point at which the head is being measured above the datum. So, this particular head measurement whenever we are taking. So, the point from where uh, selected datum to a point where this head is being measured that is referred as a elevation. So, this can either be positive if the point is above datum, negative if, if it is below datum. So, the sign convention what we follow is positive if it is above datum, uh, negative if it is below datum. So, in soil mechanics the total head is defined as pressure head plus elevation head. So, with the deliberation whatever we have discussed now and we found out that the flow of water through soil is very significant and has got lot of potential and importance in soil mechanics. Now, let us look into the concept and mechanism what happens when the soil uh, flows when water flows through soil. 
So, water flows in soils only when there is a gradient of head h that means that there should be a, a certain energy so that it water can use that energy and it can flow through soils. So, lack of gradient in head implies that water is not flowing that means that if the head which is available for the flow is say less or it is not inadequate then it indicates that there is no flow it, uh, taking place. Whenever there is a water flow in soils there is energy dissipation occurs. So, uh, for the flow to take place it has to spend the energy that means that the whatever the energy it has got to enable the flow to take place. So, that energy dissipation occurs. So, at the beginning when the when this water is entering the soil phase it can have a full energy by the time it came it comes out of the the soil uh, path then it loses all the energy. That means that when the flow takes place to the soil a certain sort of energy dissipation occurs. In soils water are permeant if the fluid which is different from water then in that case it is called permeant the one which flows to the soils is permeant always flow down the gradient. Uh, that does not necessarily that you need to have down the hill if the even under confined conditions are so if there is a difference in head in the, even in the upward direction also water can flow if the head that means that if there is a energy uh, from uh, point 1 which is lying at the lower level to point 2 which is lying at the upper level it can flow with the by, by virtue of an energy. So, this uh, that is the water flow from higher energy region to low energy region that means that water flows from higher energy regions to lower energy regions. So, flow of water through soils, uh, flow of water through soils which is linked uh, with uh, this particular uh, legend here which is shown water flow in soils that means that energy dissipation takes place even for water flow to you know water flow in soils to take place gradient in head h is required. So, if there is a gradient in head h then water flows in soils and then energy dissipation occurs. So, uh, this we have understood that uh, the flow of water through soils it can take place provided if there is uh, you know the higher energy or a higher head at upstream end or a point 1 where uh, the energy is high and a point 2 for example, uh, where the energy is low then the flow can take place from 1 to 2. When the water flows from 1 to 2 in the process it uh, uh, undergoes a something called an energy dissipation process. So, let us consider a uniform head distribution in a soil deposit. So, in this slide in example 1 where uh, the ground water table is shown here at two points here 1 and 2 where the pressure head is h1 elevation head is z1. So, this is the datum here. So, total head is h1 plus z1. In, in case of this particularly this point 2 the elevation head is z2 that is very close to the datum and h2 is the pressure head. So, h2 plus z2 is again total head h. Now, if you look into it here the total head at h uh, total head at point 1 is h and total head at point 2 is again h. So, uh, as the total head h is identical flow would not take place from 1 to 2. So, this type of condition we define as hydrostatic condition. So, we have used the previous lectures all we were determination of effective stresses what we consider is that the ground water table which is hydrostatic uh, in nature. So, in this slide what we have seen is that uniform head distribution in a soil deposit. So, as the total head h is identical flow would not take place either from 1 to 2 or 2 to 1. Let us consider uh, in case of uh, head in static water in capillary tube previous lecture we saw that uh, above the water table uh, the the columns hanging water columns the, that is the columns which are passing through pore spaces sucks the water from the water table and keeps in it that by virtue of a phenomenon called surface tension uh, which is acting along air uh, water and inner surface of the solid grains. So, this is H c 
we have discussed and seen that as a capillary uh, capillary height and one is that meniscus. So, let us consider two points 1 and 2. So, this is that H C which is the uh, which is uh, above datum that is above ground water table level at uh, ground water table that is 0.2 is uh, at, uh, at atmospheric pressure where pressure is equal to 0. So, water rising above that which is less than atmospheric pressure is negative. So, if you consider uh, at location 1 say elevation head is H c meters above datum this plane is selected as datum. Pressure head is minus H c that is by virtue of the definition just now we have given. So, total head is equal to elevation head plus pressure head total head is again 0. So, 2 uh, that is this point at datum elevation head is 0 pressure head is 0. So, in the process total head is equal to 0. So, here um, there is no flow of water in this particular situation this is uh, this capillarity phenomenon is just because of the uh, because of the uh, surface tension which is arising at air water and inner surface of the solid grains. So, this also demonstrates that if there is no uh, head difference then the flow would not take place. Now, let us consider an example 3. So, this is uh, what we have seen the fluid at rest in soil no flow conditions. So, even the capillarity uh, phenomenon what we have seen appeared like flow, but it is uh, something called a no flow condition. So, here that is one which we are discussed is that pressure in water uh, is less than atmospheric pressure that is negative in the capillary zone that is the reason why uh, the pressure head which is taken as minus H c and here is that moist dry soil and here below the ground water table again the positive pore water pressure exists. So, this is that the zone of uh, capillary saturation if there is a partial saturation exists then this negative pore water pressure tends to fall and then reaches 0 and ultimately the pore water pressure is 0 in this particular zone. If it is dry because of the uh, climatic fluctuations then it can change to uh, 0 there. So, uh, this this is actually a condition which what we discuss is the fluid at rest in soil no flow condition. Now, let us consider flow of water through soils under confined uh, aquifer through, an, through a confined aquifer. So, assume that here at point 1 at the at a elevation z 1. So, this is the reference datum here z 1 which is the elevation head and pressure head here is P 1 by gamma w. So, uh, at point 1 the total head is nothing but P 1 by gamma w plus z 1. If you come to point 2 the pressure head is P 2 by gamma w plus z 2 is the elevation above the datum. So, total head at point 2 is P 2 by gamma w plus z 2 that is H 2. If you observe that H 1 is greater than H 2 then water flows down the hydraulic gradient from point 1 towards the point 2. So, this is this particular if this is the length L then over this length L then the loss of energy is occurring uh, at, at this rate. So, if you see here H 1 and H 2 that is the total head the difference the between H 1 and H 2 between two points which is referred as head loss that is delta H is nothing but H 1 minus H 2. So, for the flow to take place uh, down the hydraulic gradient not necessary that uh, you know downhill conditions should exist. Naturally, when the there is a downhill conditions are there the flow uh, uh, can take place from higher end to higher level to lower level, but is not necessary that it should prevail always if these conditions exist then water can flow like this from 1 to 2 if there is a head at point 1 is greater than point 2 that is when H 1 is greater than H 2 with a loss delta H the water can flow with a certain gradient. So, when looking into the flow of water through soils and we assumed that water takes water flow takes place in a microscopic point of view uh, along a tortuous path through pore spaces and so there are some assumptions and then the theory which comes out is Darcy's theory. But basically 
this assumptions are uh, involved or soil is fully saturated. So, this soil is fully saturated and the frictionless boundaries assuming that when the flow to take place the boundaries which are uh, free from any friction and flow is laminar that means that the Reynolds number particularly in case of soils it is defined as rho v d 10 by mu where the rho is the mass density and v is the velocity of flow which is called the discharge velocity and d 10 is the effective particle size and mu is the dynamic viscosity of water or premiant under consideration. So, when the, the, the assumptions involved are flow to be laminar that is Reynolds number has to be less than 1. In fluid mechanics we use around 2000 for defining the laminar conditions, but in soil mechanics which is different which is uh, here indicated as R e less than 1 uh, the flow to take place through soils under laminar regime conditions. Now, consider uh, a saturated soil mass confined in a cylinder having a length L and assuming that these boundaries are frictionless and which is this point 1 and point 2 or point A and point B are subjected to a head total head is H A with P A by gamma W and a Z A elevation head. So, total head is equal to H A and total head at point B is equal to P, by gamma, P B by gamma W plus Z B that is H B. So, the head loss occurring between a and B that is H A minus H B that loss occurring between uh, two points A and B it is H A minus H B. So, here this is the cross sectional area A which is perpendicular to the direction of the flow perpendicular to the direction of the flow. So, in order to maintain these two total heads uh, what happens is that a constant source of water has been supplied any extra level of water is collected in another jar. So, here uh, this particular head is maintained. So, what exactly if you measure uh, this particular uh, discharge here that is nothing but the one which is uh, flowing through the soil. So, uh, this is the cross section area A which is exposed to the water to flow through the soil and delta H is nothing but H A minus H B the difference where H A is greater than H B. So, the head loss between two points which is nothing but delta H is equal to H A minus H B which is nothing but P A by gamma W plus Z A minus P B by gamma W plus Z B. The head loss delta H can be expressed in a non dimensional form in terms of a in a parameter called hydraulic gradient I which is indicated by I is equal to delta H by L, where delta H is nothing but a head loss that is the difference of uh, total head at point A and point B and L is the length of the flow over which the loss of head occurred. That means, this is the one which is uh, uh, which is something like in a microscopic, macroscopic point of view a straight line passing through pore spaces as well as solids which is an imaginary line which is taken as the flow path. So, I is equal to delta H by L very important parameter in, uh, in, in pertaining to flow of water through soils is hydraulic gradient which is defined as delta H by L. So, when the water flows through soil it exhibits uh, V has got certain relationship with I. So, I which is plotted on x axis and V uh, which is on y axis V is nothing but is called as a discharge velocity or superficial velocity because it is called superficial because it is the one water which flow which is taking place uh, uh, through the soil soil as well as uh, soil solids as well as through uh, uh, water in the pore spaces. But in principle the one the flow velocity of flow through the grains or the through the solid grains is different. So, that is uh, the one definition which we are going to look into it shortly, but if you look into it if the hydraulic gradient increases gradually the flow remains laminar that means that V is proportional to I whatever uh, we 
uh, v tries to proportional to be i and uh, it remains in laminar regime and after certain uh, when the hydraulic gradient increases it transforms into zone 2 which is called as a which is called as a transient zone above the zone uh, zone 2 it is zone 3 which is called turbulent zone. So, when I increases gradually the flow remains in laminar zone in zone 1 and zone 2 and V bears a linear relationship with I. So, both in zone 1 and zone 2 V bears a linear, linear relationship with I. At higher hydraulic gradients that is higher values of I flow becomes turbulent. So, in most of the soils V is proportional to I. In gravels in and very coarse sands the V, v is proportional V uh, to be proportional to I is not valid. That means that in most soils V is proportional to I that means the laminar regime exists. In gravel and very coarse sands turbulent flow conditions may exist and V is proportional to I is not valid. So, the flow of water through gravelly soils also a certain type of uh, uh, the regime which takes place is the turbulent regime where the Reynolds number is no longer less than 1. So, by looking into this relationship between velocity which is nothing but uh, uh, discharge velocity or superficial velocity and hydraulic gradient Darcy has proposed an equation based on proportionality between discharge velocity and hydraulic gradient. After Darcy 1856 this is known a simple equation uh, for the relating the discharge velocity of water through soil through stand, uh, saturated soils basically the assumption is that saturated soils and which may be expressed as V is equal to K i. V is the discharge velocity or superficial velocity, I is the hydraulic gradient and K which is defined as coefficient of permeability very important parameter pertaining to flow of water through soils. So, K is also called Darcy's quotient of permeability the units of quotient of permeability are equivalent to the velocity that is meter per seconds in SI units. So, V here that is the discharge velocity or superficial velocity which is the quantity of water flow flowing in unit volume through a unit cross section of soil at right angles to the direction of flow. So, V is nothing but discharge velocity or superficial velocity which is the quantity of water flowing in unit volume through a unit cross section of soil at right angles to the direction of flow. So, flow is through the pore space in soil not through the entire cross section area. So, if you look into it the flow which is taking place is through the uh, you know pore spaces uh, which are available in between the solid grains not through the entire cross section area. That is the reason why this particular uh, velocity which is indicated in this Darcy's equation V is equal to K i is called discharge velocity or superficial velocity or some extent it is given name called fictitious velocity. So, this particular Darcy's theory or V is equal to K i equation is formulated based on the observation of flow of water through clean sands in an ideal condition a clean saturated sands. So, flow of water through clean saturated sands. So, Darcy's equation is usually combined with uh, continuity equation for determining the uh, total rate of flow through cross section area A which is exposed for the flow to take place which is uh, continuity equation which is nothing but Q is equal to V that is the discharge velocity and A is the cross section area over which the flow is occurring. So, Q which is nothing but the total rate of flow through the cross section area A is equal to uh, V times A. Then substituting for V is equal to K i we can write Q is equal to K i A. So, which is uh, this Darcy's quotient of permeability or the quotient of permeability K is defined as the ease with which the water, uh, water flow can take place through soils. So, as we know that we have got different types of soils. So, we require to know uh, this particular parameter which is the which can be measurable in the laboratory as well as in the field and which is a parameter which can help in selecting a particular type of material for a particular application. So, let us look into you 
uh, this particular case, uh, what is this velocity which is taking place or which is occurring when the flow is actually taking place through grains. So, consider a saturated uh, soil assemblage matrix with solids and water and if you idealize now which is nothing but water and soil solids has got uh, for a unit uh, width has got area which is area of voids and area of solids. So, in a total area A where the which is exposed to flow it is having uh, A is equal to A v plus A s the total area a cross section area over which the flow is taking place with a head loss uh, occurring at point 1 and 2 for example, if there is a point 1 and 2 which are uh, in, uh, imposing the flow to take place from 1 to 2 then uh, if the flow takes place. So, here the velocity which is occurring through the grains uh, is termed as seepage velocity. Then what is the relationship between seepage velocity and then the so called discharge velocity. So, let us consider a, uh, a thin view a, a view of the uh, enlarged view of the particular grain at the grain surface and then place where water is flowing. So, this is the pore space over which the water is uh, flowing through the soil. So, at this particular point the pore space or you know has water has actually has got larger area. So, the still the velocity is v that is this v is nothing but represents something called uh, which is taking place over the area a over which the flow is occurring. And v s is nothing but the uh, velocity uh, which is taking place through the grains that is at the void space between the grains. So, uh, if you look into it, so if there is a reduction in the uh, this particular area that is at the area of voids uh, at this particular point. So, because of that uh, there is a chance that this particular velocity has to be more than uh, this discharge velocity, because there is a reduction in the uh, particular uh, void space with that water again conforming to the continuity equation uh, what will happen is that the flow rate has to be equal to the one which is entering the soil entire soil mass through the one which is taking place through the voids. So, for the unit width of the soil sample if you look into it the void ratio is nothing but volume of voids to volume of solids that is defined as area of voids to area of solids for a unit width of the sample. Now, using the principle of continuity Q is equal to V into A, V is the discharge velocity which is occurring over a area A and V s is the, the velocity which is actually taking place through the grains that is the flow velocity which is taking place through the grains over a space that is nothing but area of voids. So, for entire soil mass if you look into it the V s is here defined and the given name is called the seepage velocity. The seepage velocity is the velocity is nothing but a flow velocity which is actually taking place through the solid grains. So, here q is equal to v a is equal to v s a v. So, by uh, substitution here uh, v s is equal to uh, a by a v into v, a by a v into v is equal to uh, v by v v into v. So, by using the definitions ag again whatever we have defined v by volume of voids that is nothing but 1 by porosity. So, now we have related V s is equal to V by n, where V is the discharge velocity, n is the porosity. As the porosity of the soil is ranging from uh, always have 0 to 100 percent. So, uh, this particularly if you look into it, V s will be always greater than 1. As n cannot be more than uh, 100 percent or so, with that what will happen is that the seepage velocity is always more than 1. Even that now full, uh, can be verified here because of the reduced uh, 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 volume or area of cross section to the voids there will be an enhancement and increase in the velocity. So, the seepage velocity is always uh, more than uh, flow velocity the seepage velocity is the velocity which is actually taking place through the solid grains. So, the relationship between seepage velocity and the fl uh, flow velocity or the discharge velocity is nothing but V s is equal to V by n 
where n is the porosity. So, for the uh, if you consider this uh, the flow direction flow will occur from A to B if there is a head loss taking place from uh, this point and the velocity particularly when the flow is taking place from A, A to B as a particle of water proceeds from A and towards B it exerts a frictional drag on soil particles. So, this frictional drag is nothing but the energy whatever the soil is whatever the water is losing in uh, flowing through the soil. So, as a particle of water proceeds from A to B it exerts a frictional drag on soil particles. So, the direction of the uh, this uh, particularly a uh, in turn produce a seepage pressure in the soil structure. So, this seepage pressure uh, will occur always in the direction it can be if the flow is taking place from A to B top to bottom then it is called downward flow bottom to top then it is called upward flow. So, seepage pressure is due to flow of water through voids seepage pressure is due to flow of water through voids. So, because of the frictional drag the hydraulic head decreases steadily on, uh, on every flow line for example, if this is A B is considered as a flow line. So, the hydraulic head decreases gradually for example, if there is a delta H here and L is the length over which this uh, length of point distance between A to B is say L then delta H by L which is nothing but hydraulic gradient. So, the the water uh, it loses the head as it flows from A to B. So, as a particle of water proceeds from A to B it exerts a frictional drag on soil <coughs> in turn produces seepage pressure in the soil structure. So, the direction of the seepage pressure always in the direction of the flow direction of the seepage pressure is always in the direction of the flow. So, seepage pressure is due to the flow of water through voids. So, because of the frictional drag the hydraulic head decreases steadily on uh, every flow line. So, hydraulic because of the uh, frictional drag the hydraulic head decreases uh, steadily in every flow line. So, having now seen the importance of flow of water through soils particularly relevant to uh, the subject heads like environmental engineering and construction engineering. Uh, then in the previous uh, lectures uh, we have derived and defined uh, this total stress is equal to effective stress plus pore water pressure. Suppose, if the soil reaches complete equilibrium or a complete dissipation of pore water take place then what will happen is that sigma tends to equal to sigma dash that means, that entire water pressure has been transferred to the grains the grain to grain interaction has been mobilized. So, that we define also as intergranular stresses. Uh, in case of dry soils then sigma is equal to sigma dash that also we have defined. What will happen now if the water flows through uh, the soil whether it induces any changes in effective stress or not. If it induces what will happen? if it is when the water is flowing for example, from top to bottom or bottom to top. In the case of uh, particularly in case of the previous con uh, conditions we have considered that hydrostatic conditions no flow conditions then we have established the relationship like total stress is equal to effective stress plus pore water pressure. So, in this lecture what we introduced is that flow of water through soils has been introduced and we understood uh, that if there is a uh, flow to take place that head should be available and uh, it not necessary that down the hill that means, that energy at point 1 to point 2. So, for example, if it is energy at 1 is higher energy 2 is low then the flow can take place from 1 to 2. That means, that the different the flow enough uh, for the flow of water through soil to take place there should be some energy dissipation that is because the energy dissipation occurs because of the this is spent in the form of a transferring in the form of a frictional drag to the soil particles. And the path which is taken by the uh, uh, water uh, through the soil is called uh, uh, is tortuous path, but the one which is idealized is taken as a straight line which is not the tortuous path. So, and we also try to deduce a relationship between V and uh, I and we said that V is proportional to I and V is equal to K I this is very important equation in soil mechanics that is called Darcy's equation. Then we try to reduce the relationship between uh, 
V s that is C phase velocity is the velocity which occurs uh, through the solid grains and V that is discharge velocity or superficial velocity and porosity which is nothing but V s is equal to V by n. So, in the next class we will try to see what will happen when the water flows through the soil whether any effective stretches changes occur or not. In the in, in continuation of this we will also see what are the factors affecting the permeability and how this permeability can be measured in the laboratory as well as in the field.